Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the C programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about pointer arithmetic. Now, I know we've talked about pointers if you've been following along in this series or maybe some of my other videos that I've put out. But in this one, I just want to go ahead and play around with pointers a little bit and give you a little bit of intuition as to how things work. And I also want to make sure that we understand how size of is working with, especially when we're working with pointers, it's one thing to be careful of with size of with heap allocated data. Again, it's something that I've probably mentioned, but it's worth mentioning again. So let's go ahead and play around a little bit with some pointer arithmetic. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just to start off this example is give us some data to work with. Now I'm going to go ahead and work with an int here. And let's just go ahead and create an array here of integers here. Now I'm going to just go ahead and initialize this array here with a few different values here. So let me also draw it out here just so we have for reference our actual data here. So that way we can uh, figure out how things are working. And I have the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is a int array of data. And I'll just go ahead and put a equal sign here. Or actually, let's just put the brackets here to match. And there we go. Okay, now just to make sure this works, let's go ahead and print this out here. So I'll write a loop here for i equals zero, i less than six, plus plus i. And let's just go ahead and do a quick uh, printf here. And I'll just go ahead and print out the data at its index. We'll go ahead and compile this. We'll check for any um, warnings that we have and treat those as errors. And of course, compile with debugging symbols. And as you can see, this is working just fine. Okay, now a few incremental improvements we can make here. Again, we probably want to do something like uh, size t here, just to be a little bit more clear on our uh, type. Still compiles just fine, uh, and I'll leave it at that. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to pointer arithmetic is we're actually doing some already. Now, can you spot where we're doing it? And I'll give you a little bit of a hint here that it has something to do with when we've been doing data at i here. And recall that whenever we're using brackets, these are actually dereferencing for us, okay? And i, and I'll highlight here, is the offset that we're dereferencing in our memory, okay? So what we could actually change this to, if we want, is to say, hey, here's data. We want to dereference it and then add some offset here to our actual memory location that we're accessing, okay? So this is functionally equivalent. It's the same thing. The brackets are a little bit of a syntactic sugar. If we wanted, we could use what I have uh, highlighted here. So again, what this is doing when we have data is data itself is giving us the address just here where our memory location starts for our first integer. And then if we wanted the next offset here, plus one, that would give us this box. And then another plus one would give us this box, and another plus one would give us this box, et cetera, et cetera. Now, why am I adding one here? And if you know what size of is doing and how big of an integer is, why aren't we adding four? Because, well, we have to get four bytes over to get to the next integer. And that should be correct, right? And let's, let's actually go ahead and test it with size of here. So just to give us a little bit of information, let's go ahead and just do a printf here size of, and we'll do with a integer. And uh, if I'm printing out the size, I need to do uh, percent uh, LU and a backslash N here, size of int. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out. Run GCC, recompile, size of an integer is indeed four. Okay, so let's go ahead and test out this uh, version of our code here, where I'm just gonna change how we are accessing uh, each element of the array here. So again, I'll come to uh, line number 10 here, and I'm going to just change this around a little bit. Let me give myself a few spaces so you can see more clear. I'll put data in parentheses, the offset of i, and we want the actual value, so I'm going to dereference it. And then let's go ahead and execute our code. Compile is just fine. And if we run it, we get the same exact result. So at least now we should be... Uh, have some confidence that these are functionally equivalent. Now, what we could do if I want to get rid of the ampersand 
and actually print out the addresses to look at them. So using percent %p, let's go ahead and take a look. So this compiles just fine. And if we run it, and if we look carefully at the memory addresses, every time that I'm adding i, so i is 0, the first iteration of the loop, then it's 1, then it's 2, then it's 3, 4, etc. Notice that the addresses that we're moving are shifting by 4. Now you have to know your hexadecimal. It's a little bit easier here. So I'm at 10, then 14. 18, C is 12, so that's 22. Uh, and then back uh, around here, uh, I loop. Okay, so we can see that this is actually adding for each time. And just to go ahead and show you that it's adding the data type, let's go ahead and just change the data type that we're working with here. So if I change this to shorts, which are two bytes, and I'm gonna go ahead and update what we're printing here. Let's go ahead and see if this still works. And let's see how much the addresses are offsetting. So let's go ahead and recompile, rerun. And again, we have to be a little bit careful with our arithmetic here. I'm going to pick some of the easier ones here, but we can see that we're just offsetting by two bytes, which is the size of our short here. Okay, so that's really handy that we can just offset here by some value and know that it's going to sort of do the right thing. But again, internally, we have to keep in mind that when we are adding to something that's a pointer, like a data or something that is an address that we are offsetting here, we are shifting the size of that type, the underlying size, that number of bytes. So in the case of a short, it was two bytes. In the case of an int, it was four. So I'll go ahead and change these back to integers just so um, we are more comfortable. More, more folks are probably used to using uh, integers here. Um, and let's go ahead and play around with this a little bit more. Now, the one thing that I do want you to be careful of when using size of, however, is sometimes you are going to see folks do this trick here. So instead of saying i less than 6, you'll see them do something clever like the size of the data divided by the size of the underlying type. Okay, so let's actually print out the actual size of data here and see what that results in. And I'll go ahead and compile this. I run it. And this still works as before. It's actually generating the exact same code here that we have. And we can see size of data is 24 bytes here. Okay, so this is 4 bytes, 8 bytes, 12, 16, 20, 24. Okay, and this works. So I'll go ahead and say this works size of data if data is stack allocated okay this is just allocated on the stack we can see exactly just like our compiler can how big this data is the one thing that i want you to be careful of with this trick is if i go ahead and let's change data here let's go ahead and say int star here data so i'm heap i'm going to heap allocate uh, my data here size of an integer and let's do the same thing let's allocate six of them and I'll go ahead and cast my data here. I almost always do. Uh, and because I'm using malloc, I'm going to need to include standard lib.h. And now let's go ahead and see what happens here. OK, so go ahead and recompile. And uh, whoops, looks like I am actually getting uh, some errors. So let's go ahead and see what's happening here. Make this a little bit bigger. And it says division size of int pointer divided by size of int does not compute the number of array elements. OK, this is pretty cool here. We're actually getting a warning here. Let me actually turn off our warnings and not treat them as errors. And you'll see that this works fine. <laughs> and then if I actually run it, well, you know, this is the error that we were getting warned of here. Because data, the size of data here, when we're treating it as a pointer, is just giving us the size of the pointer. We don't know, we don't have that information because the heap allocation happens at runtime for how big this is going to be, right? This could be 6, this could be 20, this could be times n, where the user is inputting n while the program is actually running. So our compiler is doing a pretty good job here of giving us warnings here. And I treated them as errors. Let's just go ahead and compile it uh, with warnings here. So you can see the warning again here that says division when you're using size of a pointer is probably not the thing that you want to do uh, or at least it's something to be careful of if you're trying to use this trick here okay um, so uh, the solutions here again compile with warnings treat those warnings as errors so you don't end up making this mistake and if you really do want some sort of data structure to keep track of automatically um, 
the size of your underlying data type, you probably have to add some sort of abstraction and build a uh, array type uh, to your needs here. Okay, so that's just something uh, to be careful with with this uh, size of operator. Uh, but now you also sort of understand why because um, size of is returning the number of bytes that you have. Okay, and now we also understand why that's not going to work because when we do the underlying uh, arithmetic here, we're not going to increment properly through all of the bytes, which is incrementing through four bytes at a time uh, when we use our pointer uh, arithmetic. Okay, so with that said, you know, most folks are probably happy here, but I want to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and uncomment this, get our program in a safe state here. So where things are working here and just to make things uh, maybe more uh, clear for you, I'll put this back as uh, the integer type here. And I want to go ahead and show you one other trick or some other things that you can do with pointers that are sort of interesting. Um, because most folks, again, will show you pointer uh, addition and, you know, 99% of the time that's what you use. But I want to actually show you subtraction as well, uh, because uh, that also works uh, with pointers here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just create another range of data here. Let's just go ahead and call this data two. Uh, and I'm going to add a bunch of elements here, nine, 10, something like that here. Okay. So now we have uh, data one and data two. Let's go ahead and line those up here. Um, and then let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to go down here uh, a little bit lower in our code here. And this time what I'm going to do here is just try to subtract these two. Let's see what happens if I subtract data two from data one. Okay. Um, so I'll say the difference uh, between them, data two minus data. And let's just go ahead and print out what that is. And I have the diff here. And let's see what that is here. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of a nicer message here. So the difference between data two and data. And again, these, uh, you know, these are arrays. We're accessing the first element. So as a pointer here, so we can do the subtraction. And then if I run this, I get a difference of eight here. Okay, so, well, what is eight? I mean, what exactly does that give us here? Let's, let's play around with this a little bit more here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this here. Let's call this diff two here. Give us a little bit of a uh, printout here. And this time, let's actually cast them to their types here, uh, to uh, pointer types here. And let's just go ahead and uh, recompile this. Oops, one moment. I'm getting a warning here. It says I'm not uh, using this variable. So let's make sure we use it in our code. I'll recompile, rerun, and hmm, okay, uh, eight again. Okay, so um, hmm, did I make a mistake? Did I forget to cast something? Well, I made sure to treat these as integer types. Um, but what I'm getting at here is a little bit into uh, the weeds of memory allocation here. So let me go ahead and show you a little uh, experiment. Let's go ahead and put seven here, add to our data. And I'll go ahead and rerun this. And we still get eight. So what am I exactly subtracting here? And then I'll put eight here. Let's go ahead and grow this. And I'll rerun this and still eight. Okay, let's just keep growing this value here. And if I run it, oh, wow. Okay, all of a sudden I get 12 here. Okay, so now something kind of strange is happening. And go ahead and see if you can kind of draw this out to try to figure out what's actually going on here. Well, the reason that we sort of jumped up a bit actually has to do with how we're packing the actual memory together. So usually we're on these sort of four byte uh, boundaries, as you can tell there. Uh, so for instance, if I go ahead and uh, remove this item here, then I can rerun it. And then again, you're going to see that we're only separated uh, by eight elements. Now, why eight? Because I'm subtracting the address of data two, which is going to be a a uh, higher address. So again, if I draw our program stack, and for this, you're going to have to go way back a few uh, lessons here, right? We allocate data here, and it's got eight elements. So let me go ahead and draw, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I allocate data two here. So the difference between whatever this address starts at, and I'm just going to label this as eight and this at zero, is 
eight bytes. Okay, that's the actual separation here. Now, this boundary is actually going to be four bytes here. Okay, so this is just a little trick here using um, subtraction here with our pointers that we can actually figure out what that boundary is. If we want to figure out actually how many bytes that is, we can do a little trick here. So I've set this up uh, a little bit here. I can cast these two uh, characters. This is just a little trick you can use here. And let's just go ahead and recompile, rerun. And we can see that there's 32 bytes between these uh, two particular data structures. Now, are all of those bytes used? Maybe, maybe not. So in the case uh, here, and this is getting a little bit uh, into the advanced uh, thick of it here, like if I put nine here, right, we can clearly see that I'm not using 48 bytes of information here. I'm only really using 36, but uh, there's some empty space here uh, where we have 9, 10, you know, and 11 on our uh, stack as well. Okay, uh, so just a little trick that you can use. That's one place where I've used uh, subtraction. You could also uh, subtract away from your uh, pointer here, for instance, if you wanted to uh, iterate through uh, the end for some reason. Um, anyways, I just thought I'd show that as a neat trick and uh, one use of subtraction that I have occasionally used to figure out sort of uh, byte boundaries or uh, to figure out if there's any room I can squeeze something in between uh, these pointers here. So with that said, folks, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on point arithmetic. I hope at least the first half was uh, interesting and the second half is at least a little bit intriguing where you can see how memories uh, working a little bit and that you're going to be very, very careful when you're using size of with pointers specifically, especially with heap allocated data. So if you enjoyed this lesson, go ahead and make sure to give it a big like. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future lessons in the C in a Day programming series. And I'll look forward to seeing you folks in the next one.